Today we're going to explore a language that used to have its own unique script. An Asian language where you suddenly find quite a few Spanish words. A language that unites an extremely diverse nation. Como esta? My name is Julie and welcome to the Tagalog language. Tagalog is spoken by the Tagalog people in the Philippines and has around 28 million native speakers and 54 million second language speakers. Why so many? Because it is the official language of the Philippines, alongside English. Actually, to be precise, Filipino is the official language, which is basically Tagalog and both terms are used interchangeably, but Filipino has a slightly modified vocabulary, which was inputted from other languages of the Philippines, as there are around 175 languages spoken there. But why from all of these 175 languages they decided to make Filipino out of Tagalog, and where does this language come from anyways? Tagalog is a huge language, but surprisingly there are not so many resources online that teach it. But I know one platform that teaches Tagalog and more than 130 other languages, italki. On italki you can learn virtually any language with a native speaker, but it's not just about quantity, it's above all about quality. You get one-to-one -one personalized lessons tailored to your language level, interests and goals. I especially enjoy italki because it allows you to practice speaking and listening in a real-world conversation, which greatly speeds up language learning process. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And what is I? Is it like is? So is are... Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. is, are, am, those are I, okay, in Tagalog. Through italki, you can connect with more than 30,000 teachers worldwide, and filters help you pick a teacher that matches your personality, or probably you need someone who also speaks your native language. Italki is super convenient, there is no subscription, you pay as you go. You can get a lesson for any time you need and learn anywhere, all you need is your laptop or your phone. Of course I have a nice offer for you the first 50 people to click the link in the description and use my promo code will get $5 free when buying $10 for their first lesson. Tagalog belongs to the Austronesian language family. You may have heard of Austronesians, the seafarers who roamed the mighty oceans. It all started small though, in Taiwan the original Austronesian homeland. Their star rose when they invented outrigger boats, which are basically canoes with lateral floats, outriggers. That was super effective. Thanks to the enhanced stability of these new boats, they could expand from here to here. So before Europeans ventured out into the seas, Austronesian was the most dispersed language family. Their expansion started 2-3 thousand years BC, and their first stop was the Philippines, conveniently placed just below Taiwan. The connection between languages from Madagascar to Hawaii is still seen in some of the common vocabulary. All or almost all of the languages of the Philippines and northern Sulawesi are conveniently brought together into the Philippine language family, but there is actually still debate if this grouping is valid. Maybe there are more families in there but more research is needed. 175 languages after all. Of course, there are still pre-Austronesian languages spoken in the Philippines, which don't belong to any of the existing families spoken by the Negrito people, of which there are only around 15,000 people remaining. Throughout most of the history, the Philippines weren't a unified political entity, but a tapestry of smaller chiefdoms and kingdoms. These were often organized as a collection of independent barangay, something like proto-city-state or, in some cases, proper large city-states like Tondo or Manila. And if you think that that sounds suspiciously similar to the current capital of the Philippines, that's because it is the same place. By the way, the term barangay is still exists. It refers to the smallest administrative division in the country. Back in the days, the archipelago was at the crossroads of multiple trade routes. Through trade, the Philippines received cultural influences from 
China, India and Islam, never really assimilating to any of these cultural codes. In 1521, Ferdinand Magellan reached the Philippines on his round-the-world journey, trying to prove the Earth was round. This is where his life was forcefully ended, but his crew was able to finish the journey, so Europeans finally found out the Earth was round, though some of them still didn't receive the news, it seems. For the Philippines, however, this marked the beginning of Spanish colonization, which lasted for 333 years. Of course, in such a long time, the Spanish were not only able to success fully convert most of the population to Catholicism, but to also introduce Spanish vocabulary into Tagalog and into other Philippine languages. It is said that words of Spanish origin may constitute 20 or even 30% of Tagalog vocabulary, with words mainly relating to religion, government, everyday items, and cultural concepts. Even the common greeting, Kamusta, descends from the Spanish, Como esta? During this period, the capital city was set in Manila, and this Tagalog-speaking region grew in importance. The Spanish rule was overthrown during the Philippine Revolution in 1896-98. During this time, Tagalog played a prominent role as a language of resistance and identity. The Philippines proclaimed itself as an independent republic. In response to that, Spain made a cunning move. They didn't recognize the independence and just sold the islands to the US and let the Americans deal with it. And they dealt with it. American colonial rule continued until 1946, with a brief break on the Japanese occupation during World War II. Prior to that period, Spanish was the lingua franca across the Philippines, and it was the official language of the first Philippine Republic. During the American period, English gradually replaced Spanish, and now English is official. But the Philippine government also wanted to develop and adopt a common national language, based on one of the existing native languages. They picked Tagalog as the base for the national language in 1937, as it was the most widely spoken native language and was spoken in the capital, Manila, and it also had an important cultural and historical significance during the Philippine Revolution. In 1959, Tagalog was renamed and slightly engineered to become Filipino. Filipino is taught in schools across the country and is promoted by the government as the medium for national unity. Now that we know why they speak Tagalog in the Philippines, let's see how they speak Tagalog. The first written document found in the Philippines dates from the year 900 AD, and it is written in Old Malay. Tagalog people later developed their own writing system, called by Bayin, which means to write or to spell. The script was probably adopted from the Old Javanese Kawi script, which itself originates from the South Indian Palawa script. The oldest writings in Baibayin date from the 14th century. Like other Indic scripts, it is an abugida with 14 consonant characters and also three independent vowel characters. With the Spanish rule, the Baibayin script was gradually replaced by the Latin script. However, recently there has been a Baibayin revival, and it is used sometimes in government agency insignia, by artists, or even some books are published in Baibayin. Currently, Tagalog uses the Latin script. We find 28 letters in the alphabet, which are the same as in English, with the addition of letters ng and ny. There are five vowels, and eight of the letters are only used in foreign words. The pronunciation is mostly phonetic, which is helpful. Only in the rare cases there are some unexpected pronunciations, like this word, which is pronounced sha. Another sound found in Tagalog is a glottal stop. For example, where there are two vowels, one after another, they are pronounced distinctly, like in ma'ala ala. Did you hear the separation between the two a? That was the glottal stop. Stress is extremely important in Tagalog. It mostly falls on the penultimate syllable, but not always, and that is not marked in writing. Stress can change the meaning of a word. Consider baka and baka, or pito and pito. You can also hear how the stressed vowel is pronounced longer. But now let's hear the native speakers. Na nagbenta kay Bostoyo ng tropiko at nilagay niya sa museum niya at lahat naging masaya kasi hindi. Ngunit inamin ni Jiro, dala na rin ito ng pangangailangan. 
Nauunawaan din naman ako ng mga tao, siguro, kung bakit ko uh, pinatago kay Bostoyo yung trophy. Siguro dala na rin ang hirap ng buhay. Malungkot ang simula ng bagong taon para sa isang pamilya sa Ontario matapos mapatay sa isang hit and run ng isang international student. Ang pagluluksa ng naiwang asawa at panawagang suporta sa komunidad sa report ni Paula Saraza. Alvin, tuloy-tuloy ang isong isinasagawang misa dito sa simbahan ng Quiapo. Nagsimula yan alas 5 kaninang madaling araw at, at, at uh, yung huling misa ay mamayang alas 8 pa ng gabi. Ayon sa Manila Police District, as of 3 p.m., umabot na sa 176,000 yung mga nakapagsimba dito sa Quiapo. How does Tagalog sound to you? Did you hear any familiar words maybe? And if you speak any other Austronesian language, how well could you understand Tagalog? And while writing your answer in the comments, or while you're checking out my Patreon, for example, where you can vote for the next language. Let's move to the next section. Let's start off straight with an example. Masayasha, he is happy. The subject is in the end, and the verb to be is not used. But that's the colloquial Tagalog. In written Tagalog, you'd say, Shia ay masaya. Now the word order resembles the English sentence, and the verb to be is actually used. The next example, Naglilinis si John. John is cleaning. Here, si is a case-marking particle, which is placed before any noun. There are three cases, direct, which is like nominative, indirect, which may function as a negative, accusative, or genitive, and oblique, which shows location. There are different sets of particles for names of people and everything else. Like that, for an object, we'll use different particles. Sarado ang bintana. The window is closed. The main difficulty of Tagalog is the verb. To put it really simple though, there are verbs. They can be either actor-focused or object-focused. So like, he ate it or it was eaten by him. Then in each of these two groups, there are different conjugation variants. Conjugation happens by adding affixes in the beginning and or even middle of a word to get things like past, present, future or imperative. Of course, some verbs can have both actor and object focused forms. That will depend on the sentence. Let's see another example in details. Nagdala siya nang liham. She or he brought a letter. The word order is VSO here, though we saw already that word order can be quite free. Nagdala is the past form of magdala, to bring. Tagalog doesn't have grammatical gender, so sha is used both for he and she. Finally, nang is an indirect case particle. Reduplication is a common way to form new words or grammatical meaning in Tagalog. For example, if you wanted to put the previous sentence in future, you'd say magdadala siya ngaliha. The syllable da is doubled to get the future. The whole words can be reduplicated too, and this is actually quite a common feature in all Austronesian languages. Reduplication is used to indicate plurality. Sagging, banana, becomes sagging, sagging, bananas. Intensity, malaki, big, becomes malaki, laki, very big. Repetition, sulat, to write, becomes sulat, sulat, writing repeatedly. Or even playfulness, Julie, Julie, sounds playful and cute. Filipino slash Tagalog has been promoted as the integral part of modern Filipino identity. Every year, the Philippines observe the language week, Buwanga Wika, which celebrates Filipino and other local languages, as well as Filipino culture. During this month, they organize events, exhibitions, language learning workshops, and traditional attire days. It seems that Tagalog is doing quite well these days, and I'm happy it does, as it is definitely a language with a rich history, and it possesses both a pleasant simplicity and an intriguing complexity to it. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in our next exploration.